Yo, what's good, YouTube? Zamcro here, aka Scoot, back with the Nina Mori Nation Draft League, and we have a Week 11 match versus Rio Dio, aka Rio Coach. <clears throat> I actually forgot his uh, team name. What is his team name? I think it's. Uh, is it something weird? Like extremely weird? I'm not really sure. Maybe like New York Chandeliers or something like that. Anyways, he decided to bring Tapu Coco, Mega Scizor, Vaporeon, Hoopa Unbound, Rotom Heat, and the Dragon Eye. Um, not bringing Don Fan, Bella Lawson, um, Kamala, Grand Bull, or Caracosta, uh, two of which were his Z-Move users, but he does have Dragon Eye, which is a potential Z-Move user. Um, we've decided to leave Licky Licky on the bench, Ori Corio on the bench, and I believe uh, our boy Suicune on the bench this week. And we've got a... Uh, We've got a Mega Metagross, Hydreigon, Clefable, Landorus Incarnate, Decidua, and uh, Mudstone. We'll talk about the team as we get into the match a little bit. So, uh, I don't think he's going to be like a Choice Scarf Coco, but I don't want to bank on that. Um, it's kind of a scary lead. I do want to lead off with my Hydreigon though, as uh, I can U-turn versus everything. Like I said, I don't expect him to be Choice Scarf Tapu Coco, but still kind of scary. So let's take our time. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think we'll just lead off with uh, with our Hydreigon. We'll just lead off with the contract. Huh? So our opponent leads off with his Rotom. This is a fair play. I'm not exactly sure uh, how valuable this Rotom is to him. Uh, potential Metagross check. Could be like a scar for revenge killer. Could be a will o' wisp user. I think I can poison everything except the scissor. So I think I'm gonna throw up a toxic. I don't know if my opponent just lets Rodham take a, a potential choice scarf for choice specs or life orb Draco. I don't know why I said choice scarf, it's not really <laughs> an item boosting. Uh, a boosting. Uh, I should say. So yeah, turn one here. I think I'm just gonna throw up the toxic, like I said. Let's see what he wants to do. He could be like a thunder wave variant, which I guess could be problematic. I'm just going to throw up a Toxic anyway. Oh, my man reveals to be Choice Scarf. So he's not going to even actually know that I'm Choice Scarf. So that's actually really, really fantastic for me. Here he's going to go either for Heal Bell or Wish. I'm going to go immediately into my Clefable and get Rocks up. Yeah, as he just goes for the Wish. So now he may have to take an extra turn to... Uh, to click heal bell. Do I click flamethrower here on the incoming sizzle or do I just get rocks up? I think I'm just gonna get rocks up and see what I can do from there. Alright, so I did land the toxic and I'm gonna get my rocks up here on this turn. And he could go into the scissor or he could throw off a heal bell here. He may be inclined to heal bell. Okay. He actually goes straight into, uh, back into Rotom Heat. So, more than likely going to reveal Defog. I would assume. Hmm. We can't really hurt this thing, so there's no real reason to stay in or anything like that. Um... Taking an overheat is problematic. I 
Um, I think, uh, I'm gonna go hard into my landers. Let me just see how much landers is gonna be done into Rhythm Heat with a Life Warp Rock Slide. If he's, uh, well, he, he did reveal to be Choice Guard, right? So he's definitely not going, he's definitely not, he, he might go for a Defog. We're gonna, oh, he we went for Trick, so that makes sense. I was really unprepared for that. Um, now we can bolt switch out. We're not going to let that happen though. We're going to go forward into our landers. And we're going to get this uh, Life Orb Rock Slide off. He may go into the Vaporeon, but then we'll see how much damage it takes and then can engage from there. It is uh, more specially bulky than it is physically bulky uh, in terms of natural defenses. I really hate that I let that thing get Trick. Uh, I knew he was Scarfed from turn one. I just blanked on Trick being a possibility there. So we're actually uh, getting a nice 60% crit there. I'm gonna be able to easily follow up with a Earth Power here to knock out this Vaporeon. Yeah, my play is just quick Earth Power. I don't care if he switches into Rotom or Dragonite or anything like that. Um, let me just check here. Vaporeon, it did with a crit. Oh, no, that's his hit. Um, so we know he's not like physically defensive. So our best bet is probably to click Rock Slide again. But even if he's like maxed to death, we should be able to knock him out from this range, right? with that can survive a hit the I could see him uh, preserving this and going back out into his rodent or his uh, Dragon Eye, but I don't, he don't, uh, he don't gain anything by it. Like, Vaporeon isn't very important to him at this point in the match, in my opinion. Yeah, we're just able to knock him out there with the Earth Power, so that's fine for us. Now we take a 1 0 lead, and uh, we'll go from there. Tapu Coco immediately. Oh, I'm going to harden my mud though. I can tank um, Hidden Power Ice. So is my play to click Earthquake here or to click Lord? I think it's Earthquake since he can potentially taunt me. He did reveal leftovers. It'll be interesting to see what his, uh, his next move is. Actually, let me see something here real quick. But still, Tapu Koko is not a, it's not a Z move usually, so it can't be like a Z move usually. <laughs> I don't know, but 
can be. No, it showed leftovers, didn't it? So, even if you went to like plus one, maybe it's modest. That's when blame still bounces, so my best move here is click or click. I just think he's going to click uh, like Hidden Power Ice or Dazzling Gleam or something. I don't expect him to set up or switch. I don't expect him to switch, that's for sure. He should at least stay until I break the sub. Hmm. Um, so I still got Choice Scarf Hydreigon, which looks really nice in the late game. So it did 25%, so that's looking like, uh, it's looking like modest damage. I don't think Timid could pull that off. Timid can't pull that off, so. I think my play is to just click Earthquake. I have no reason to predict the Rotom Heat. I could have clicked Rock Tomb there, but like I said, I have no no reason to click uh, click that move. This thing looks like it's going to be a solid check to Tapu Koko throughout the match. So I think I'm going to go into Clefable uh, here. And get my rocks back up. I don't think he bolt switches out on this turn. Yeah, he doesn't. He actually clicks toxic and misses. A little bit unfortunate for him. What's he gonna do now? Though? He's gonna toxic me, right? As I get up rocks. So like Rotom Heat did reveal it was offensive, right? Rotom Heat, offensive, level 100. How much does Mega Metagross do with Zen input? So it's a two hit KO after Stealth Rocks. When am I getting these rocks up though? That's the question. So what I gotta do is I gotta get rocks up and then get back to uh, hard switching back into my landers. So that's what we'll do here. We'll get rocks up, hard switching the landers this turn, and start to uh, weaken the brother. Now I just click uh, rock slot here. Did I miss Rock Slide earlier? Oh, I heard. So how did I get health back? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Rock Slide uh, has a chance to flinch, so Life Force, thanks to Sheer Force, doesn't affect me. Okay, forgot about that. I mean, I didn't forget about that, I just forgot that Rock Slide was one of those moves, too. So if he goes into Scizor, which is his, his best switching right here in my opinion, um, he's going to take a little bit of damage uh, since he's not mega yet. And then after, I could potentially knock him out with Earth Power. Unless he's like max HP and max to death, then it's a problem. My 
my opponent has uh, the option to, I think, click Toxic here. But I don't know if he wants to take damage on his Rotom. He does have my leftovers, so uh, from Clefable. So he's not like a Charty Berry or uh, Eye Papa Berry or anything like that. Um, Dragonite doesn't want to come in and take a Rock Slide. It'd probably drop to the following Rock Slide. Hoopa Unbound doesn't particularly have great defenses. So he does Toxic, but this potentially removes his uh, Defogger, which is really nice for me. So I can click uh, Rock Slide here. He does to go, decide to go out to his Sizzler. Interesting. Now, let's see if this thing, if this thing is max HP, max for that Sizzler. I, I don't want to take a chance of turning around and losing to this bad boy. I think we go hard into uh, Metagross and start spamming Hidden Power Fire. We're just going to click Zen Headbutt here. Um, so I actually undersped Rotom Heat uh, by accident. So I was supposed to be setting a 299 speed like my Landers is, but accidentally, I guess I have a 1 EV, like well, 4 EVs left over or whatever. That's okay. Um, only bad problem is now, this gives him the ability to go hard into <clears throat> his Hoopa Unbound, which could potentially uh, start doing lots of damage to me in return, uh, which is what we don't want. So let's just see exactly how much Hoopa does if he is scarred. So after Bolt Switch damage, he can't knock me out. If the Hoopa comes in, I think I'm just going to click Hidden Power Fire. Right. Knock out the Scizor, make sure it's not ever a threat. Okay, so that's a huge threat going. So I'm really glad that I clicked Hidden Power Fire there. Uh, not expecting maybe the Rotom to come back in on the sack or something like that. Definitely needed to knock out the Sizzler. So now Mega Metagross is looking like a huge threat. If I can get rocks up, uh, if I can get rocks back up, I can actually keep them up, I believe. So here's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go forward into Clefable. 
should I go hard into hydrating? I think going hard into hydrating is actually better because uh, Clefable is the obvious switch. And you can just go into hydrating on here and click U turn. And I can just click U turn here. And if he stays in with a Hoopa, it will knock him out. If he goes into Rotom Heat, this allows me to go into uh, Clefable and spam Stealth Rocks. Since I don't necessarily need Clefable anymore, where do I? I think I do still need Clefable. So perhaps the play is to. into Dragonite, he takes a Rock Slide on the following turn. If he goes into Hoopa, I can U-turn out on the following turn. And if he goes into Coco, I can click Earth Power on the following turn. So I'm going to click Rock Polish here. And now I'm going to click uh, Rock Slide as he clicks Toxic. Okay. So incoming Rock Slide. Incoming Rock Slide, come on. That doing 49% gives me the chance to click Rock Slide again. Now he brings in the Dragonite. He could have extreme speed, but I'm not going to play around. I'm just going to click the Rock Slide. Okay, I want to rely on Clefable first, and if Clefable can't do it, I'll go into uh, to Hydreigon on the following turn. But first, I want to uh, try this Clefable out. So he could be Z uh, still. He's got a chance to knock me out. It does knock me out. That's okay. Um, now there's a chance that he's not Earthquake. Extreme speed at plus one can't knock me out from this range. There's a max of 46 to my set. And he might not see uh, Choice Scarf Hydreigon coming since I didn't outpace his. Uh, 
his Rotom hate earlier. Gives me uh, Mudsdale. And my Decidueye is very specially bulky. So, shouldn't be too problematic actually. We're definitely keeping Hydreigon around though, because it can knock out the uh, Bun down with the uh, U turn. Unless it's like Tangaberry, that would be scary. Hoopa, I have to sack off the situation. And if he goes to Coco, I go hard in the mudstone route. Hard in the mudstone. And now I just start spamming Earthquake. Landers 9 was only at second death, uh, given it hasn't come, it hasn't come to all games I've played though, uh, I think it's only been to 10 out of 11. Let's go with the Earthquake, and uh, hopefully can pick up the knockout here on the Super. They eat up the Hyperspace Fury. Now, so that's gonna be it. Good game, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be it. We're gonna be moving on to uh, week 12 versus Curtis in the following week. So, look out for that. Let me know what you guys thought about the prep and the plays on both sides of the field. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All the good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.